After one of my recent videos where I discussed overclocking results with Intel's flagship CPU, the i7-7700K, I couldn't help but feel that there was more to be explored, more to be unlocked. I set out to build a powerful, glorious PC, but overclocking the i7 just about turned it into a microwave. Was de really the answer to the ridiculous thermal throttling I was getting at 5GHz? I set out to void my warranty and find out in the process. For those who aren't familiar, CPU de involves removing the integrated heat spreader from the PCB and CPU die, and replacing the stock thermal compound with something aftermarket and a little more premium. I tried both Arctic Silver 5 thermal paste, which is regarded as some of the best thermal paste out there, and also Cool Laboratories Liquid Ultra, which you can buy for about $15 online. I'll be doing a full comparison between the stock Intel thermal interface material, the Arctic Silver 5 thermal paste, and Cool Laboratories Liquid Ultra in another video to fully investigate how much of a difference there really is between the three. But in this video, I'll be sharing my deleting results from the Liquid Ultra because, spoiler alert, that's what I decided to leave in there. Now, tool-wise, I did 3D print an Intel CPU deleting tool that I found on Thingiverse, however, it simply didn't work. This tool's design uses a torsion force between the two 3D printed parts to twist the IHS off of the CPU's PCB. However, the IHS just didn't want to budge and I actually ended up cutting carefully around the IHS with a razor to remove it. I definitely wouldn't recommend this to those without a steady hand and eye, as one little slip or error and you can easily scratch or cut into the PCB, which will most likely kill your CPU instantly. So, do as I say, not as I do, as it is pretty sketchy and cutting the glue between the IHS and the PCB is pretty tough. Once you get the IHS off, it's just a matter of cleaning off the dark rubbery glue that was previously there and of course removing the stock thermal compound both off the CPU die and the bottom of the heat spreader. After you've removed most of the stock thermal compound, clean thoroughly with isopropyl alcohol. After you've dried that, place a small amount of your chosen thermal compound onto the CPU die and spread it flat onto the surface. With Liquid Ultra, you get two of these handy brushes that help spread the compound nice and evenly onto the CPU die. Lastly, carefully place the IHS back onto the CPU. Note that you can use a weak adhesive to secure the IHS back onto the CPU's PCB. However, leaving the IHS like this floating will be totally fine as your motherboard will secure it anyway. So, now that we have deleted the 7700K and have used what is said to be the best thermal interface material available, Liquid Ultra, how fast can we really go? And how do the temperatures compare to non deleted Starting off with the 7700K at stock settings, that's 4.5 GHz at 1.2 volts, we can see significant temperature improvements. In our gaming benchmarks, we see about an 8 to 12 degree delta between the untouched and delitted 7700K, and we see an even larger delta when looking at the CPU rendering benchmarks, a 15 degree improvement in Cinebench R15, and 13 degrees cooler in the Blender 4K render scene. These are pretty significant results, but what about overclocked? Well, the stock 7700K wasn't stable above 4.9 GHz, so let's compare it to that. The delta extends in our gaming benchmarks, as the deleted 7700K didn't get any warmer compared to stock, still 50 to 51 degrees Celsius, but the non deleted temperatures increase a couple degrees. In rendering, we see the same delta here at 4.9 GHz as we did at 4.5 GHz. In Cinebench R15, the non deleted i7 was bordering on 90 degrees Celsius, whereas once deleted, we see that cool down to a stable 74. Blender showed a consistent delta once overclocked too. We've gone from almost thermal throttling at 93 degrees down to a cooler 81. 5.1 gigahertz at 1.35 volts was finally stable now as well. Here we are doing better than the untouched 7700K was at 4.9 gigahertz. So temperatures being equal, we've effectively added 200 megahertz to our core speed by deleting. I also managed to boot and run some tests at 5.2 gigahertz at 1.44 volts. In Unigen Heaven, we're seeing 57 degrees in ultra settings and 60 degrees at low settings. In Cinebench R15, 1.44 volts proved to be a little bit too much, and we're seeing temperatures in the mid-90s. The Blender 4K render scene gave the i7 an absolute beating, thermal throttling pretty much instantly and freezing the entire system. So, was it worth it? Absolutely. We can see a 10 to 15 degree temperature improvement across the board, and I can finally run 5 GHz at stable temperatures in my current system. I imagine that if I'd water cooled the CPU with a liquid AIO or custom loop, I'd see temperatures reduce again by about 15 to 20 degrees Celsius. So, thanks for watching. If this helped you out, then feel free to leave a like or a comment, and don't forget to subscribe for similar content in the future. Thanks again, and see you in the next one.